were the original inhabitants of this land called Australia by the white men. We have been here since the beginning of time, since the dream time, when everything we know was created. My people know how to sing each and every place of this sacred country. While we contemplate G, the sun god. Each song is a living map which describes a specific path, the course of a river, a mountain or forest. If you brought together all these songs which are passed down from generation to generation and which come from dreams, we would compose the map of Australia. At twilight, the humming of the didgeridoo, our religious instrument, reminds us who we are and what we are doing here. It is the beat of our tradition which keeps us united and attached to the land. Aborigine, as foreigners call us, and I'm going to tell you what a world is like. My country is enormous. It is an island that could be a continent. It is the most beautiful country in the world. We have deserts, jungles, savannah, plateaus and mountains with the deep canyons carved by furious torrents. The sea is all around. Along our coast there are bays and inlets and sacred cliffs like this one of Beekerton Island. This is where I live. We elders have the important task of initiating the young into our customs, explaining our history to them, and teaching them to respect the traditional laws. Our people, our culture, are the oldest in the world. We were already here thousands of years ago. We were around at the same time as what the white men called Homo sapiens. In these caves and caverns, we can feel the influence of the spirits of our ancestors. If you sleep here, you can see them in your dreams and receive their messages. They come and fill you with their strength, and when you wake, you feel very good. These are sacred places for us. In the past, people lived in caves and natural shelters like these. Across all our territory, you can find paintings made by our forefathers and which speak of the dream time, the creation, and how they lived 50,000 years ago. In the Kakadu National Park lies Ubirok, where the rainbow serpent stopped after creating the world and was painted on a rock so that people could see her. Over time, our forefathers left on the rocks a complete collection of images which depict their way of life and their beliefs. They painted the animals they hunted or fished 
so the spirits would help them capture them. In this way, we know to what extent these animals are the same ones as those we eat today. But a moody fish, long-necked tortoises, kangaroos, crocodiles, wallabies. We know that they knew what many of the animals they drew were like inside, their skeletons and some of their entrails. The paintings and some of the most inaccessible places were made by the Mimis, the lesser spirits which are the cause of everything that happens to us, good or bad. According to the legend, with their long, thin bodies, they glided to the very top of the cave, took pieces of rock, brought them down to the ground, painted them, and then put them back on the ceiling. On these ancient rocks, they also drew figures of the men of that time, Warriors and hunters who used these same spears and harpoons as we do now. We share our land with all types of animals. Some of them as dangerous as the sea crocodile, a sacred animal for us, even though it is capable of devouring a man in an instant. The kangaroo is the most characteristic animal of my country. I know over 50 different types, some of them over two meters high. They are beautiful and unique. They carry their children in pouches which the mothers have on their stomachs. The forests and swamps are full of multicolored birds like the yellow-crested cockatoos. There are also dangerous poisonous snakes and others like the olive python that kill their prey by strangling them. We have always respected all the beings of creation. Each tribe, each person, has one or more animals which are their totems, because they are in their dreams, and they can't hunt them or eat them.